All right. Uh, welcome, everyone, to um, the Urban Forestry Commission meeting of June 7th, 2023. Um, and I, I we the only person uh, that's from the public is Kent. Um, which is kind of odd. I think the link on the um, I think the link on the agenda. It didn't work. Did it not did, work. Did not work. Interesting. It said oh, it was here. Good. It said it was for the meeting on five seventeen. Okay. Well. Well, I don't have anyone emailing me from the public, so I think we should just proceed with the meeting as it is, and then it'll be posted as a uh, a public meeting. The video will be posted once I send it to Bonnie, and then we can go from there. And if we have any issues with the public, I'll just I'll have to I'll deal with them. I don't want to I don't want to not meet. Um, yeah. um, we're not we're not also taking any um, according to the agenda. Anyways, we're not taking any critical votes on anything. So we are just really voting on past minutes. Um, uh, we are, um, Kent is uh, graciously provided with um, an overview of his um, uh, tree planting and removal um, synopsis from 15, 2015 to 2022. And so while well, those things I can all share with the public as well, um, it, it's just a link. Um, and I, I, Kent has been, Kent said he was okay with that. So. Kent, do you have anything you want to add as the only member of the public? <laughs> no, I'll just wait for my presentation. Thanks. Okay. All <laughs> right. Um, did everyone? Uh, yes, Bonnie. Oh, sorry, I was waving goodbye. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bye, Bonnie. No, oh, well, I hope Bonnie doesn't leave. That means I got to take the minutes. <laughs> uh, um, did everyone have a chance to review the minutes from the last? the three minutes that I sent. Not quite finished yet. Okay. All right. So please take your time. Just let me know when you are ready to move on. I'm done. Um, I have a question about the minutes from April 7th. Yeah. Um, I don't remember being at that one. It. Let's see. I, I don't believe you were unless you, you weren't at that meeting. That was during the daytime. All right. I didn't think so because there's an X next to my name. There's like names that are in bold with X's and then other names with X's. So I don't know what that means, but I wasn't there. Okay. Bonnie, if you could just make note of that, please. I'm done otherwise. I'm done too. So, all right. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, can we uh, get a um, someone want to entertain a motion to accept the minutes? I have one other question. Oh, sure. Both of those other, um, besides the main minute meeting minutes, they were both called the Educational Outreach Subcommittee. 
-hmm. but one was on Atlantis and the other was on a different topic. So are they actually the same subcommittees or different ones? We we don't have we don't have another subcommittee listed. So uh oh. for ease of organization on the website, we uh, Karen Nelson and I decided just to put them underneath that particular subcommittee. Um, if we want to form another subcommittee that deals directly with um, planting and public outreach, um, then we would make a different committee heading because every every subcommittee for every commission, um, um, their name is nested under the uh, initial commission's heading uh, mm -hmm. on the city's agenda center. That's how it's organized. So for ease, it was just to put it underneath there. But it, I, I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I was now expected to be at that April 7th one or no. not, since it's sort of the same committee, but different topics. No, no, no <laughs> it's just that's how it got named. All right. Uh, OK, just different subject material. But we'll. If we do that, if we continue to do that or want to do that again, I'll make, uh, I'll have Karen make a, a different, um, we'll, we'll come up with a different committee name and then uh, our subcommittee name, and then we can just nest it underneath that one. Okay. So, all right. All right. Uh, any other questions or comments? Uh, could some, would someone entertain making a motion to accept the minutes as amended? And actually, um, would you be okay with accepting them all as a bundle? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if someone could make a motion, I to... make a motion that we accept the meeting minutes from March 28th, April 7th and April 19th as a bundle as amended. Second. All right. There's a motion made and seconded to accept the minutes. As present as uh, as amended for the 328, 47, and 419, 2023. Is there any discussion? Uh, seeing no discussion, we uh, take a roll call vote, please, Bonnie. Sure. Rich. Uh, yes. Susan? Yes. Molly? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. David? Yes, although I wasn't at the subcommittee meetings. That's that that that's okay. You can still vote on them. It doesn't matter from what I understand. So vote can still be counted as a yes. Okay. Then yes. And then Richard. Yes. All right. Thank thank you, everyone. So we're we're getting up to speed. Uh, my apologies for all the two two weeks vac two weeks of vacation. In the spring for me is not a good thing it's really just kind of <laughs> threw a wrench into everything i mean i had to go it was great to go um i will fill you in just quickly because i haven't seen all of you i have talked to several of you but um just a couple of outstanding things um from my trip was one that um many of the trees that we're presently planting in the public right away parks and cemeteries and as setbacks um, look beautiful in full maturity in in tennis, Tennessee and Dalton, um, Kentucky, um, even Buffalo. So we were in Buffalo for uh, for like day and a half, um, and um, I'm so pleasantly pleased that we, as a group, and with Tree Northampton and the other volunteer organizations, um, have learned to plant trees correctly mm. because about ninety. 5% of the trees that I looked at were all planted incorrectly. Um, and, and it's very, really super unfortunate. Um, the Nashville Tree Foundation, which is um, an organization similar to Tree Northampton, um, but it's more of a fundraising operation. They've planted over 10,000 trees in the last 15 years in Nashville. And they're beautiful. Nashville's really had a wonderful revitalization of its downtown. Um, but their trees are all planted in a lot of them. I say the majority I saw are planted incorrectly. Are so, they dying? To be honest with you, um, the, the ones that I examined were all ones that were planted within the last five years, probably. So it's really sort of hard to tell. I mean, I'm sure they're struggling. Um, they do, they were, they have, um, you know, they see they were mulched. Okay. 
Some of them have volcano mulch. A lot of the older plantings were just covered in volcano mulch. Everywhere I went down south, there was mm -hmm. volcano mulch. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I joined I joined their email listserv in the hopes that while I was there, I could sneak away and do a tree planting. But they were not planting any trees um, that week that I was that I was there. And I was just going to go in disguise and say I was a volunteer <laughs> from Massachusetts, um, and I don't know anything. But uh, it didn't didn't quite didn't quite pan out. So, um, and then I went to another community called Franklin, Tennessee, where, um, they also have, uh, it's very similar to Northampton. I went there on a Saturday. It was very lively. I mean, it was packed. You had to walk in the street, the sidewalks you couldn't walk on. Um, and they had, um, all of their tree pits were filled with trees. The new trees they had planted, they used what looked like, um, sort of a, uh, Porous um, flexi pave, or uh, that they would use around the tree wells. But when, when, sorry, I'm watching my two dogs. If they're barking in the background, nothing's happening. It's all good. Um, they uh, they it looked like bark mulch, so I had to get on my hands and knees and actually look at it. And it was basically um, uh, bark mulch and some kind of uh, polymer mix that once it was laid in place, it looked like actual fresh mulch. So um, that was nice to look at. Uh, but unfortunately, again, a lot of those trees are planted too deeply. So I guess my my theme, it, my two things I took away is that um, it was beautiful um, to see all the, like the hackberries, the tulips, yeah. uh, Kentucky coffee trees, um, sweet gums, um, a lot of red buds, a um, lot of red buds, actually. And there was also, of course, I love the crepe myrtle, but the crepe myrtle can't grow here. A um, lot, lot of crepe myrtle um, in maturity is beautiful. And I'm looking forward to like when I'm 80 and I can go back to Northampton and kind of look at see what we've done. Yeah. Um, but I was truly disappointed that the plantings just were not done to the best of their ability. So yeah. it's my takeaway message. Um and then I saw a ton of sugar maples. There are hmm. sugar maples everywhere. Hmm. You know, they, they were as many sugar maples as hackberries. And I was amazed. Um, and they they looked um they looked healthy. They weren't street trees per se. They were more on they were I went to a park, they were in a park, they were in uh, I went hiking in Georgia, they were in the mountains. Um hmm. so I saw a lot of black gums as well. But I didn't get I, I I was told as I was we were traveling that I was to stop looking up and stop looking down and keep my eyes on the road. <laughs> but, um so that was so I you know I thank you for sharing the week excursion um and the, the planting that we've been doing and the, uh, the meeting. Rich, your audio is garbling. Yeah, probably can you hear me now, Sue? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's better. Maybe you need to make sure you're lean forward or something. Yeah. Um, so um, I do want to update you. We did have a public shade tree hearing um, when I returned. Um, it was the 18th of May for River Road. Um, there was uh, there were no objections. So the tree at some point in the near future will be removed. Uh, National Grid is going to pay the mitigation, which I don't have it in front of me, but I think it's $6,500 for the mitigation for that tree um for the for the one tree that's going to be there for their electric service project that they have all the poles in place um and then uh, other than that really um just sort of concentrating on getting with past getting things ready for memorial day um we were able to support some plantings um, um with tree northampton's help plantings did happen while I was away. We've planted since then. Um, we're in the process of putting all the water bags on all the trees from 2022. So I think that should have been completed today. Um, I was out of the office today and um, that will, they, and they need to drink badly because um, we are, you know, sort of in a um, dry spell. We haven't had a lot of rain. So um I don't really have uh, much more to add unless anyone has any questions. Um, Molly. Not a question, but there's a beautiful um, Kentucky coffee tree in bloom on Spring Grove Avenue on the left, just before you get to JFK. Oh, nice. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I, other thing I want to Thanks. tell you is thank you. I also went and I visited um, Chestnut Ridge Nursery. So oh. when I went to Buffalo, we went to Niagara Falls and we went south and we stopped in Springville, New York. And that's where we've gotten all of our bare root stock. Hmm. And uh, I spent about two hours there with Bob and his wife, Ruth, and we drove around and he, they have 150 acres of, uh, I think it's 150 or 140 acres of, of uh, tree nursery at two different sites. And he just took a shipment of 33,000 bare root trees that had to be put in the ground. And they were all healed in, um, in this big field. And I was, I was, it was incredible. Um, and he and his wife, his daughter, and um, two um, seasonal workers do all the work on the nursery. So it's pretty, pretty impressive. He showed me the tools they use to bare root the trees. They have a digging machine that goes behind a tractor that actually slices the soil open and they have all the trees uh, stocked up and then they drop the trees in the hole and then the machine covers the hole over and heals them in and they move on to the next one. So I've watched YouTube videos of that. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It was really very, very, uh, very interesting trip for multiple reasons. So. <laughs> Um, I, that, I, have a, that, I have I have two things. George, George trying, trying to get, get in, in to, the, to the, meeting. the meeting. I mean, I, mean, I instructed, instructed them, them to go to, go to, go to the, the, the. Did you did you did you send, send George an invite? invite like a, like a, a, calendar, a calendar, calendar invite? Okay, okay. I'll just I'll keep, keep working, working on it. On it. Um, uh, um, uh, there, there, the other thing, thing I, I, I just have a general procedural question. Um. Uh, uh, I noticed, I noticed that, that the um, um, planting of uh, uh, prospect in front of the, front of the synagogue, synagogue, I think, I think that they are, you know, spruced up some mulch and stuff, and, stuff, and, I, and think I think that there's, there's like way, way too much mulch on, on the trees, trees and, and kind of kind piled, piled up uh, against, against the trunk. The trunk. So, so I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know, know, I meant I to meant ask you when we were on the other day, and I forgot. Uh, uh, should should I don't, I don't know how you want to proceed, proceed with that, that. And, and I don't, I don't know, know if that's appropriate, appropriate for this meeting discussion or, or, or you know you know like do like, do, like, like should, should we contact them first or just send them to go out clean it up or you know um I probably we should go and have a probably I have uh Neely's email address we could email her and maybe we could just sort of um go over there and talk maybe set up a time to go talk to her Okay. okay. And, and do you do want, you want like, like one of us, us to, do to do that? that? Like, I'm, like, I'm, I, I'm happy, I'm happy to, do to do that. that. Or, or do you, do you want, want to handle it? I mean, I just didn't know. know. Sure. Order, Order of operations. operations. Sure. I, I can, I can send you, I can send you her contact information. As long as you just CC me, that would be great. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I can, I can do that. that. Um, Sorry, Jackie Balance just emailed me. Hmm. I could forward her the invite that I used to get in. Yeah, would you mind, Sue? That would be great because she's... I would not mind. Thank you. I don't... Um... Yeah, Jen, I'll give... I'll connect with you after the meeting or tomorrow. Okay. Um. Any other questions? before um kent um let me give you uh permission uh to uh be co-host so you can actually share your presentation and if everyone is okay i'd like to give kent the floor hey wait a minute There we go. Can you see that uh, report? Yes. And you can hear me, I guess? Yes. So this is um, just a lot of summaries of the, the, all the trees that were planted from 2015 to 2022. It's based on data from uh, Rich, um, all, the, all the planting. And then also, there is a... And, 
one section where I look at the change in percentages, and that's based on also the Davy Tree survey, which I also received from Rich. Um, so in this period, just over 2,000 trees were planted. 95% um, of them have survived so far, which I think is really good, actually, from, from what I've seen. Only 5% of them have been removed. Um, this table and chart shows the number planted for each year and the percent that have been re removed. 2020 was a particularly bad year um, for survival. Um, other than that, anyway, you can see this. By the way, I should say, feel free to interrupt if you have questions. I don't really know which parts of this might be more interesting or less interesting or more confusing or less confusing. So feel free to ask questions. Um, and I'm just going to go through and, and you can pick out what's of interest or you know, look at it later. But see the, this is the 2000 trees planted and the totals, I guess 2019 was a big year for planting. Um, 2020 was a big year for non-survival, unfortunately. Um, this is as, terrific. Ken. As far as the species, these are the top uh, 10, I think, species that were planted across the whole period, showing you what was planted in each year. Um, I'm not an arborist or a biologist, so these um, Latin names don't actually mean very much to me unless until I look them up, but um, hopefully they make more sense to to you folks. Rich, um, Rich what, 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 what is, um, um, oh, it's, oh, it's platinus, platinus in Cerefolia? Jen, you're echoing like crazy for me. I don't know if you are for other people too. I don't know. This has, has to, to be one, one, four. four. I, I, I don't, I don't know. know. I'll, I'll mute, mute. Well, it's only when you're asking a question, so. <laughs> Anyway, did you have a question about this? No, no I was just, just asking, asking. I couldn't I remember, remember what the genus, genus was, was for one of them. them and Rich, Rich answered, answered it. it. Um, survival by species. Oh, there's quite a lot of variation. Um, hmm. Some of them are quite successful. And then these, the Acerifolia and Tulip, or, tulip Hephora and Biloba are, are notably less successful. Um, and this just plots the same thing. So you can see again that. Um, which one, Rich Rich or Jen or somebody, what is the Acerifolia? Oh, that's the one in plane tree. Oh, okay. That's the one in plane tree, um, Platinus Acerifolia, um, like Morton Circle. It's one, one um, cultivar that we've used. That, that that's it? actually interesting data because um we've we've planted 164 of them hmm. interesting and removed we've removed 31 hmm. yeah i'd huh. have to say what's interesting too is the acerfolia has struggled because and i'm sorry to interrupt you kent but the acerfolia has fun. struggled um a lot because of the bagworm <sighs> the bagworm impacts the acerfolia um um quite 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 a bit for for some some particular re i don't know i mean the bagworm is everywhere but the acerfolia um has really struggled a lot the other thing too is that we only remove the bagworm mechanically so as the acerfolia grow larger it's more difficult to remove the bagworm because we have a tool that we made mm -hmm. that sort of has like a fork on the end of it and you basically reach up. It's sort of like picking uh, pears, pull it down, and away it goes. Um, and the 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 tulip uh, tulipra mortality is understandable given this struggle that we've had getting that to acclimate to the planting sites, and it's particularly susceptible to desiccation. And the same with the biloba. We've had a lot of uh, struggle with the species, uh, species ginkgo, um, and the um, the cultivar autumn gold. I think, I think anecdotally, anecdotally, hopefully, hopefully I'm, not, I'm not echoing. 
too bad that. Uh, I, think I think also, also um, um, it'd be, it'd be interesting, interesting just, just to, to think, think maybe, maybe we, we planted, planted a lot, a lot of, of um, London, London plane, plane trees, trees right, right before, before like, like some, some years, years we plant a lot, a lot of one thing, thing and a lot, you know, you know so it also, also might have coincided, coincided with, um, um, you know, particularly, you know, particularly right, right before, before the drought, you, know, you know, I don't, I don't know that, that but, but, um, you know, you know, you know, it just, it might, just might be something to, to notice. notice. And I, and I, I just, just from it, from, from anecdotal, anecdotal experience, experience, I think, I think sometimes, sometimes the, the um, tulip tree, tree, some, some of, of the uh, uh, root balls, balls just, just weren't, weren't, you know, you know great, great either. Either I think, I think, I think, I think yes, they, yes, they were, were having trouble desiccation, but, but I think we had we had a lot of them that you know they they didn't have have super well well developed balls. Is what I I noticed planting them. Compared, compared to other trees, trees, not, not as many fibrous roots. Yeah, it looks that, like the acerifolia has been planted pretty consistently, although there yeah. was a one oh, in 2018. Oh, okay. The tulipfra is pretty recent, not so much in the earlier years. Um, which actually would it make means that the mortality is really is worse than we see because they haven't had a chance to die yet, so to speak. <laughs> Would it make sense just for Rich to tell, like, like Tomentosa is the little leaf linden, you know, translate them for us? Oh, yeah, sh sure. Um, so the Tilia Tomentosa is the sterling linden, which is, you know, uh, in the linden um, genus. And then uh, Acerfolia is platinous Acerfolia, but it could be blood good is a cultivar or Morton Circles, another cultivar. Um, the biloba is going to be species ginkgo. It's also going to be um, Princeton Century ginkgo, which is probably the most successful ginkgo um, cultivar that we've planted. And then there's the autumn gold, which is um, very similar to the species ginkgo, but it doesn't get as large. It's more pyramidal. Um, Critigus, Critigus vertus is um, the winter king hawthorn. Um, Styrus aflua is uh, sweet gum. Uh, Tricanthinoc, Trican—I never can say that correctly. That's the that's the locust tree. All the locust trees we planted, which are um, basically honey locusts and multiple cultivars of honey locust. Quercus bicolor is the swamp white oak. Um, the dioecia is the Kentucky coffee tree, which can be the espresso or the uh, J.F. Schmidt um, version. Um, Taxidio distatum is the um, bald cypresses. And uh, the tulip, for, uh, we all know, is the tulip tree, which has which been um, species, species. Uh, species tulip and emerald city tulip as of late, which I think in Kent's um, data shows the last three years we planted quite a bit of them and the majority of them have been emerald city tulips and getting to jen's point um just to reinforce what jen's talking about i agree with jen 100 percent um and to add to that i'm also starting to think that planting tulip trees in the fall when they're dormant after they've gone dormant is probably not the best thing to do i think we need to plant them in the spring um really concentrate on watering them well so they actually develop a root system and then um when they hit dormancy or you know after leaf drop um spray them um with that uh, anti-desiccant um wool proof which we did we did this past winter i'm uh, sorry this past fall we planted a lot of tulips this in uh in 20 um in the in the fall of 22 and the majority of them died there's very few that survived so um you know, and Kent, Kent, you don't have that fresh data at this moment. I can, we can provide you with that data if you want to update that because we are, um, I think Rich Parish has a list um, that's been generated about 33 trees that have to be removed. Um, so I, I will get you that data once that's sort of finalized. And maybe you could plug that in. Yeah, if you um, like update the spreadsheet that I'm using. Okay. Can, I can update this report. Quickly. Okay, awesome. The, the, just, just wondering, wondering about, about the tulip trees. trees. I, I think, think you're, you're probably, probably on to something, something rich that, that um, 
you know, they, they have, have these, these if you, uh, they have, they have these kind of fleshy, fleshy roots, roots, kind of, if you, if you planted, planted them, them, they, they have, have these kind of big, big fleshy roots, roots. and, and uh, many, many fleshy rooted trees, trees survive by the root when you plant them in the spring. spring. I really haven't like, thought about that until I just said that. that. Like, like magnolias, you really, really, really want to you know, plant, plant them in the spring, spring and there's a couple other trees that have these fleshy roots, you know. That's you know, it makes, makes sense. sense. I'd have to, I'd, I'd, yeah, yeah, probably. probably. That, that would be, would be a, I think, a solid recommendation to stick, stick to plant in the snow spring. Those spring. Just goes to show how valuable this is, Kent. Thank you. Oh, oh yeah, this, yeah, is, this is amazing. amazing. Hey, Rich, does, uh, does your data include spring or fall planting time? That would that'd be an interesting data to dig down into here. Um. Well, I don't think that it, it does. So the spreadsheet, um, Kent could actually pull that off the spreadsheet because it does have the date when the trees were planted. So every, I, I think, right? This has the year. It doesn't have what, the month. Yeah, like or what season. But okay. it's, it's possible that you could do, it's possible, Kent, that from the data that I sent you in the spreadsheet, because I do believe it tells uh, when it was planted, um, you could sort of uh, disseminate between fall and, uh, I'm sorry, between spring and fall. How would I do that? Um, if you went back to the spreadsheet, um, you would actually look on the spreadsheet and it would say date planted. Okay, maybe I didn't keep that in the data that I'm looking at. Yep, no, that's, that's fine. Um, and if it's not set up that way, I can add that data easily because I have all those dates. Um, I see, yes, yeah, some of them. I think some did, but some did. Some of them have a year in there. Some of them do have a month. Yeah. Old day, but most of them are just a year. Yeah, and I also think, too, that it it, it also depends upon what kind of winter what kind of season we have we've had some very strange winter seasons where it's been not what we're normally accustomed to the temperature rises to 60 degrees for two days then it goes down to 20 and then it goes to minus 25. um i mean so it's putting a tremendous amount of pressure on this plant material and even the most hardiest plant material really just seems to just seems to struggle even it's it's taken mature trees and taking them out in one in one winter so i you know but I, this data is is really helpful because it actually um sort of dissects i guess for us in a way that we can look at it to see you know what we've done what um tree uh species has been successful um and also kind of looks at our stocking you know that we've done over the last um since 2015, which is really important, given the fact that um, the stocking that we had from the Davy uh, resource um, um, tree inventory showed that, you know, we had like 35% Acer and, um, you know, we had 20% uh, Quercus. So um, you're getting ahead of me now. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that. No, sorry. I'll save that for after. And you haven't even mentioned drought. Like that's another set of data you could overlay and see what did well in drought years. Yeah, that's possible. Let me see. I have same thing for top genera planted. Again, um, I have to show this without much comment because I don't know what most. Well, I know what a few of them are, but anyway, I'll just let you look at it yourself for a minute. Um, I don't know if Rich, you want to tell us what what these are, if, or if everybody knows already. It's easier to tell what they are, but the genus. Yeah. This is something that I used to Rob. I used to test Rob's. I used to test Rob. This is a side note to, this, <laughs> to test Rob all the time. Rob would send me a tree list of what he he said. I we, I want to plant this sweet gum. I want this red bud. And I would send back, I would send back everything in the scientific name. <laughs> and he would call me and say, Hey, will you cut that out? Like, Rob, come on, we're gonna be doing this together. We've got to, we've got to work. He goes, I know. He goes, I know. So I see this and I think of him and it makes me laugh. So 
Ha ha. When I started, he was doing that to me. Yeah. He's yeah. <laughs> so here's the, the changes in the, the top genera, which I think you're pretty interested in. The Acer has actually gone from 31% to 26%. And not because there are fewer of them, but because other things have been planted. Because the mm -hmm. The planting has actually increased the number of street trees by about 20%. So um, the, the overall percentage of Acer has gone down quite a bit. The Pinus has gone down a bit. A few of them have gone up. The um, Quercus didn't go down because you planted quite a few of them. So it's kind of keeping up with its percentage. Uh, and this little slope graph kind of shows that visually that the Acer has gone down quite a bit. Hmm. The Quercus has gone down a little bit. Pinus has gone down. The rest is sort of down here in the noise. Um, but I think you are having some success in increasing the diversity, at least as far as getting away from the Acer. So, so just, just for my, my clarification, clarification um, um, in 2022, 2022 if, if I look down the column, it says percent. That would be kind of almost currently. I mean, it would take right. some. So this is saying that Acer is twenty six percent of the current of the trees. total canopy, and it was thirty wow. percent okay, in twenty fifteen. Okay. Wow, this, this is, is super, super helpful. helpful. Here's the actual number, so you can see the actual number has increased by a few. So it's not that Acers have been lost; it's that other things have been planted, and that's increased the diversity and decreased the percentage of Acer. Within Quercus, we've planted white oak. We haven't been planting red oak. And a lot of the existing ones were red oak. Okay, so there's some species diversity. Um, I have a, a question about how you got these numbers. Are these numbers, um, you started out with the the Davy tree inventory and then yeah. added on to it? That's right. So planted? the 2015 numbers are from the Davy tree in inventory. And okay. Then the 22, 2022 adds in the 2000, well, 1900 trees that were planted. Okay. Um, yeah, that's great information. Rich, in Rich, line Rich, with the goals. Rich, Rich um, what, what um, prunus did we plant? Hmm. Uh, um, they would be the cherries that we probably planted all through um, the South Street neighborhood. At, like in the neighborhood plantings? Yeah, yeah, the neighborhood, uh, the prunus, that would be, um, that's a good question. I have to. I was just curious, there's a lot of kinds of prunus, I just wondered. Um, prunus macchii, sargentii, and sargentii cross subhertella that are from from this book there is mm -hmm. we don't we have, don't have to be labor so i figured yeah. it out later but i i, I, I was was just, if you knew off the top of your head i was just curious so then i have the same thing for the families um that were planted and hmm. uh, i guess it doesn't quite fit I'm scrolling. Hmm. And I have a, a little bit of geographical and other breakdown. So planting by ward, hmm. um, see by year and by ward, um, quite a few in ward three. Other than that, pretty well distributed, I guess, less in ward six. Um, not quite sure why I threw the environmental justice communities in here, but um, there were 585 trees planted within the um, parts of Northampton that the state recognizes as environmental justice communities. Hmm. And um, planting in special projects, this is just based on um, data from the from the spreadsheet. And where were they planted? So overwhelmingly in the tree belt and the setback. Um, do cemetery, school, and park trees, but really um, very 
majority is in the rebuilt setback and right of way. What would be the difference, Rich, between setback and setback with agreement? Uh, set, setback trees were trees previous. Uh, in the, so the setback trees count as trees that were planted by that were planted by Tree Northampton initially, and then in the inception of the of the commission, there was a period of time, uh, pro probably two years maybe three where we did setback plantings, but didn't have the formal agreement system that we have now, which wow. is it gets recorded at the registry of deeds. Um, mm. so that would be the 250 and the 168 represent what's been filed at the registry of deeds. Mm -hmm. Okay. And finally, there's a map. Um, and this is interactive. If you mouse over, it will show you specifically what was planted there. A um, couple of things, a single dot is for an address. So if you, if you zoom in, the dots will tend to be located over the middle of the house because I don't have the actual planting location. I have the address and I've geolocated those. And wow. you can see it's the dots are actually over the houses. So yeah. oh, it's cool. not the actual plant location. Wow. It's, it's the address of the, of the but then if you mouse over, it will show you exactly what was planted there. Hmm. And the larger, some of them are a little larger, that would be multiple trees, like 11 trees were planted um, somewhere on Earl Street. I guess I don't even have an address for that. Um, there's, you know, some uh, some of these addresses are like apartment complexes hmm. and multiple trees, but it gives you an idea. I mean, a lot along the South Street neighborhoods um, around downtown, um, this, I don't know what this neighborhood is called, actually. It's, I don't think it's Bay State. I was trying to figure that out the other day, that neighborhood. That's oh, no, that's the, that's like the Smith College sort of area. Yeah. You know, Kensington, Washington, right. Rob's, Rob's neighborhood. So it doesn't really have a name, uh, name like. No. It's, it had really big old trees, and they were all coming down. Uh, so anyway, a bunch on Prospect Street, quite a few around Florence Center, hardly any in Leeds. That's sort yeah. of the notable um, omission here, and some out here along um, Bird's Pit Road and Lion Road, and out here along Route 66. So you can expect explore this yourself and you can turn off the ward overlay. This is the environmental justice communities that are uh, recognized by huh. the state. They're based on um, census block groups, I think, and um, based on you know, the percent minority and the um, and the income within those block groups. You, you can get specific definitions if you go to um, SGIS and look up environmental justice communities, but that's what those are. Hmm. Wow. And that's it. That's the end. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. So much information in there. And it's beautiful, beautifully done. And Rich, I think you'll send out the link. Is that right? Yes. Put it in the minutes or something. Yes. Yep. Feel free to share the link. Um, if you want to copy stuff out of here, I've, I have credit. And basically, every chart yeah. in the table has great data credit and my name in it. So as long as you keep those, I don't mind you sharing, but just sharing the link itself. Great. Is Thank you. To, to share it. This is absolutely, absolutely incredible. incredible. It's just, just so, so valuable, valuable from. from E from, e from a person, a person who's, who's been starting, starting to cite trees, trees, you know, you know I, can I can just figure, figure out, out now, now okay, okay, what, what are species, species we should keep trying, trying to plug, plug in, in and which, which ones, ones, you know, I, 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 I have no, I have no idea, idea, you know, you know, <laughs> so, so um, um, this, this is just, just so valuable, valuable and kind of to accept, accept our, our pro planting program, program. you know, you know, what we were talking about, about the trees, thank you so much, it's just, just, it's incredible work, thank you, I'm glad. And you're very welcome. 
I Thank have you. another one too, Rich. I don't know if you want to schedule that sometime. The um, looking at all the different priority planting areas. Sure. I, yeah, I'd like to see if, that one too. Yeah, if you're if you're ready to um, if you're ready to unveil that one, that would be great. We can we yeah, can I put that so. on our next meeting agenda if everyone's okay with that. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Okay. Kent, if you could send me the the link to that so I could sure. take a quick look at it and then just get the correct um, title so I can make sure it's in the agenda correctly. Sure. Anyone have any other questions for Kent? I have a, a few questions. Well, first, thank you, Kent. This is very helpful. It um, highlights the fact that there are some species that that we're not planting a lot of, such as the um, uh, shagbark hickories, which is a drought-tolerant drought, drought tolerant species. I know it's, it, it's a long life and it, it's slow growing, but also the American elm, the disease-resistant mm -hmm. cultivars like the Princeton, and then um, conifers too. It seems like there's really only uh, the, the pine, but it, I, I'm curious, Rich, you probably know the answer, but is that because, um, I mean, how come some species are favored here? I know Rob had a whole I, philosophy. Well, I think so. First of all, the this chart just shows the top 10 planted. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't mean that we've not planted our share of elms. Um, as far as the elm question goes, um, you know, planting a lot of elms or planting elms as a staple tree is sort of risky um, because we are still, even though they are 98% DED resistant, there is that 2% chance that they could actually get DED. Um, and um, I would love to plant more elms, but I'm I'm very, I'm, I'm sort of afraid to be truthful with you because I'm afraid to set um, the next uh, tree warden and the next urban forestry commission up for, for a, a failure, just because I don't think that, I think there's enough data out there. There's enough elm research as well that shows that the these new, um, disease um, resistant elms do well, but I still think we we need to be cautious. Um, the, the, the real philosophy really is really the, the, the 10, the 10, 20, 30 rule, which is no more than 10% of one species, no more than 20% of one genus and no more than 30% of one family of tree planted. And if you recall um, in our original inventory, um, we had, um, well over, um, the two first numbers, you know, Acer sort of ruled the day. So Acer and Quercus were our main, our main staple, um, stocking trees that were planted. And, um, we also were trying to diversify our family, uh, with the new, in regards to the new tree planting and also pull, um, more trees that were not necessarily um, um, native to New England, but trees that have done well um, in the USDA hardening zones up to eight based upon the tree list and planting guideline. Um, and I think that that whole, I think this, this actually is good to see this because this will give us um, a better view because now you can actually look at what we've planted um, and you can actually see you know, the the species percent, the genus percent, and the family percent, and sort of figure out if we're actually going in the right direction with what we've planted, because um, we are at the we are at a juncture where we can we can change that, we can move that for two reasons. One, because we're still planting up to 200 plus trees a year. Second of all, um, as our canopy, our canopy is aging, a lot of our mature trees are aging out. A lot of the um, large sugar maples and a lot of the, some of the, not all, but a lot of the larger oaks are starting to fail, especially the red oaks. So we have the ability to actually um, adjust our species selection based upon this information we have in front of us and what's going to be coming down um, the line in the next five years. So. That's sort of why I think it's really important for us to, to take to digest this, take a look at it, and then think about what our 
stocking desire is so we can really keep our canopy diverse. Um, one thing I will say though, and this is in the back of my mind, is that because now there is so much money available um, uh, throughout the country for uh, municipal urban reforestation programs to the tune of almost a billion dollars, the strain that's going to be, um, the strain on the nursery industry is going to be incredible. It may not be, um, it may not be in, in this calendar year or next calendar year, but I think maybe three to four years down the road, um, you know, we may be grappling with the fact that we can't get the trees that we want to plant because everyone wants these trees that do well in these um, warmer um, hardiness zones because people are recognizing the fact that you know, we can't plant sugar maples everywhere in the tree in the tree belt anymore. You know, we have to be very selective. Um, some of the native uh, species to New England that we love can't be planted in the tree belt. They have to be planted as setback trees um, or in large parks. Um, so we can sort of kind of coexist between our native trees and the trees um, that we are trying to introduce to our canopy um, that will help diversify and get us to, to 2100 successfully so um probably talked way too much but that's kind of my that's sort of like my wheels are turning so now that we have this like in graph form where you can actually see i think we should take a step back and take a look at it and go forward from there and and come up with a uh you know continue what we're doing or maybe change the way we're doing things jen um one of the things um, um david, david you asked specifically, specifically about, about hickories, hickories and, and um, um Hickories, hickories are a little, little tough because, because not, not many, many people, people grow them, grow them um, um, to, to, to sell. sell. And, and also, also they, they don't, a lot, a lot of, of nut trees, trees are hard, hard to transplant, transplant because, because, they, because they, have they have a big, big tap, tap root. root. So, so um, um, they're, they're, it's, it's just, just a tricky, tricky. It's, not like it's not like we will we, we'll never, never be able, be able to, do to do it, but it's, you know, some producers grow them in these really tall systems and if they're, if just, they're just they're 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 hard, they're hard to, to, to 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 get to get and, and grow, grow so so it's mm -hmm. transplant it's transplant, transplant well. what about conifers david asked about i mean i would love to see more conifers um but i think the problem with conifers is that they're not for uh tree belt for trees in the tree belt they're not they don't do well because they're not salt resistant you Got know, it. I, I think there's definitely, you know, I think, you know, we've talked about introducing more setback trees, and I think we have to sort of step back and take a look at the paradigm of setback trees that we're offering. Um, and, and as much as, um, as much as we are wanting to have large canopy trees or medium canopy trees in setback locations, maybe we need to shift and take a think a little outside the box and try to convince people to take coniferous trees um, that ne may not necessarily be, um, you know, 100 feet tall, but actually might get to be to a, uh, in, in a planting in someone's yard. Um, and that, and I think that might be the way to go because there's not too many, um, there's not too many, the only place there's a lot of coniferous trees in the tree belt or in the public right of way is like in Ward 7, Ward 6, um, which are just, you know, um, there's, a lot there's a, a lot of uh mainly all white pines which are all struggling with um you know the the needle cast complex so and so, my understanding was it wasn't so much a philosophy that's guided it as data from um other larger tree programs and performance of trees like and using that vermont tree guide is what we based a lot of things on about salt tolerance and and so forth is that correct yeah i mean i i think it's i think all the things that we've talked about i hope david we've answered your question but i do believe that most of that is all of those pieces of the puzzle have been part of have been the driver for the um selection of the tree species that we've planted and again i really want to take some time and look at this now that it's in this kind of um in this kind of um 
data form so we can actually look at it and we can have a really informed discussion about what we're planting um, and whether we need to shift course based upon um, what's happening in the in you know and in, in on the streets and what's happening with the trees that we've planted that have been successful, not been successful, et cetera. Yes, Jen. I'm thinking about this as a, even, even um, you know, you know, I think we're going to have to, um, you know, beef, beef up, up our, our out, out, you know, you know, people, people who can, who can go, go talk, talk to people, people about setbacks, setbacks and, you know, you we, know, we, we can have, have a, a, uh, a list, a list, you know, you know a, a, a sub that, that, that list, list of, of suggestions, suggestions, you know, you know and, and I, I think we could, we could uh, do a little, a little research, research and come up with some, with some potential, potential um, evergreens, evergreens that we, that we suggest. suggest uh, uh, you, know, you know, unfortunately, unfortunately it's anywhere, anywhere, you know, near, near the road, road if, there's if there's any salt, salt spray, spray ever, ever, evergreens, evergreens, you know, you know they're just not going to cut it. Our spruces are in trouble, you know, there's a lot of you know, you know, a lot, a lot of things, things going, going on, on at the hemlocks, you know, and hemlocks, and, you know, you know, so, so, but, but I, I think we could, could find some that, that, that we could suggest, suggest and also, um, they're, they're good, good for, for um, energy, energy savings, savings in the winter, in the winter you know, you know, for, 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 for the wind winds and stuff, stuff. so, anyway, anyway, I do think we can, um, I'm excited about looking at this, having some, you know, you know, discussions, and, you know, you know, we can come, I think we could come up with a short list of, Here's, Here's our, our top, top suggestion for the fact right, right now, and it will change, you know. Yeah. Molly, thank you, Jen. Just a quick little comment. Um, I was just looking up salt salt tolerant conifers, and um, one that popped up was pitch pine. So, I think it's an interesting tree. It it is an interesting tree, but unfortunately, it is the primary host of the southern pine beetle. Oh no. <laughs> And the southern pine beetle is here. Oh. And the southern pine beetle is on um, the southern pine beetle is an interesting. I just uh I listened to Nicole Kelleher, our urban forest uh uh health director, yeah, yesterday actually, and, and the southern pine beetle has been found in um the pitch pine of Montague. Oh it's also been found in other places across the state. The interesting interesting thing about the pitch pine is that it doesn't only attack uh pitch pines that are um under stress it, it attacks healthy pitch pines mm -hmm. and then it it and it attacks them with 30,000 southern pine beetle not just one so it and you know the the tree's mechanism for defense is to actually try to encapsulate the um the um southern pine beetle and actually push it out of its borer hole by mm -hmm. um, wow. having um a uh, the the sappy resin be pushed out of the tree, and the tree can only do so much of that before the tree succumbs to the damage. So, but I, pitch pines are great. We have them at Spring Grove Cemetery. We have a whole mm. sort of field of them. Um, but I, you know, definitely uh, all conversation points. I'm I'm very excited about this. Um, so maybe at the next meeting we could um, we could sort of discuss what are the questions that arise from this report that we might want to look into or or we could look through it individually like what are the questions that come up that we want to um you know that need some more research or that spark mm -hmm. um additional avenues to go down yeah i mean we could just create a we could just bring those to the next meeting or we could just create a little document that we could use um as notes for our next meeting if someone wants to if someone wanted to record our questions you know just in a one-way conversation and an email would be yeah. would be great yeah i think that's a good point i think that's a good idea actually just uh, uh since we're kind of in blue sky mode here what about more like shrubs like witch hazel I mean, is it are are, are we yeah, is it a mistake to limit ourselves to trees as opposed to shrubs? With all this federal money flowing in. They're gonna spread out and make big bushes that go into the street. <laughs> yeah, but for, maybe for setback sites. I think cooling is a is a big priority as it just heats up and heats up and heats up. And that's my understanding of why I Mm. always telling people to get shade trees mm -hmm. it, 
I mean, you're right, Sue, but I, and Molly is correct as well, but I think we sort of have to think outside the box. We, have to think, we do have to think outside the box a little bit, I think, because we're not, we're not going to sell large, mature, we're not going to sell a large tree to every, for every resident for a setback. True. Um, you know, so I mean, and I think it's, I think it's, um, I put my like, I put my forestry hat on where I think of the overstory, um, you know, and the understory and how they sort of work together. Hmm. Um, and obviously we can't, uh, every, every street, uh, David, I'll use your street, for example, there's a very small tree belt on your street. We probably couldn't have witch hazel on your street because they're just, it's not, the tree belt's not wide enough, but someone could surely take witch hazel as a setback plant. Um, in conjunction with maybe a medium-sized tree at maturity. So, I mean, I, I, I think, I think this, like David said, this blue sky, or I would say the sky's the limit. Um, but I, you know, I mean, I went, I was in Cambridge today and uh, Cambridge uh, for it's, uh, I did a tree walk there and I went to a, I took a, a course um, uh, managing trees during uh, construction Um and uh, Cambridge really only Cambridge really has for its square and correct me Kent if I'm wrong because you used to live there but they still have about 25 percent canopy coverage. Um, but but walking around maybe it's 28 percent but walking around Cambridge today I felt like the canopy coverage was much greater. Um, of course I was only walking in a small part of Cambridge. It really depends on where you are. Um, I was um, near, um, I'm sorry, the name of the pond that's sort of in the middle of Cambridge, um, the large pond that has a golf course next to it. Fresh Pond. Fresh Pond. I was at the youth center that's across the street from the golf course. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, Fresh Pond is is the freshwater reservoir, the drinking water reservoir, and has a green belt around it. It's it's basically a park. Um, that that street that the youth center is on here on Avenue, pretty good. I don't know if it, it varies a lot. Um, North Cambridge, where I used to live, you walk down Mass Ave, and there's just these scrawny street trees, and it's broiling hot in the summertime. Which I did see on my way in. So I did see, I did see both of those. But I mean, it's really that that it was a really interesting presentation today, and it. You know, Cambridge is a is a great um, is a great resource for us uh, in a lot of different ways. Uh, it's a great resource for me professionally as just an arborist, uh, just because of the connection I've made with Dave Lefcourt and Andrew Putnam. But I think as a commission and also as their their public works department is so forward thinking in regards to uh, trees, uh, tree preservation, uh, managing trees during construction, um, thinking about tree planting. Um, and thinking about the existing soil that's there, because, you know, I, according to what they told me today, you know, Cambridge has been like remade multiple times um, and they just keep remaking it. Um, and a lot of soils that are there get carted off site because the soils are contaminated. They bring new soils in um, to um, do whatever these these different construction projects. Um, and interestingly enough, and I know this is way off topic, but their public works department reviews every single building permit. So when Andrew came and talked to us, I didn't realize that they re they reviewed every permit. Um, so anyone that's actually putting in a small addition or a new water line or um, building a, a, a by right construction home um, there is all reviewed by DPW prior to. And mm -hmm. part of that is um, they implement the tree preservation ordinance that they have and the tree uh, the tree protection ordinance that they have. Um, and they they basically, you know, sign off on these permits after all the conditions have been satisfied, um, which is different than what we do here. Um, DPW does not review um, all of um, building permits unless we, unless it's a site plan approval uh, under uh, the planning board. So getting back to what I was saying is that I think that this. Cambridge has got a lot of interesting information. They've done a lot of the legwork and Kent is our link to Cambridge and Kent, I thank you for that. Um, and um, I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of information um, that they have that might be useful to us 
trying to map out our future as to where we're going um, as a as a commission or as a community. So, Jen. Um, um, I, I would like to interrupt I'd be willing, willing to, to um, come, come to the next, next meeting, meeting with, with uh, kind of a list of pretty like, like shrubs. Um, um, and, and if, if you, you know, uh, you know to, to, for, for, you know, you know discussion, discussion or whatever, whatever. And if people, people want to send, send me suggestions, suggestions or once I say, once I say, thought of like, like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll come, come to the next, to the next meeting, meeting or, or with the, the, the whatever, whatever I, can I can think of, think of mm -hmm. you know, you know. Thanks, Jen. Yeah, yeah, sure. sure. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. there, there are some taller ones, ones that can, that can be, be, you know, pruned up, up that are that like, like kind of kind of like trees. But, but, but again, again, they probably more appropriate for setbacks. But I'll do that. Or as Rich said, in conjunction with other trees, like if you take a setback, you could also get, I don't know, I'm throwing this out, smoke tree or something, which I like. But um, I wanted to comment, Rich, when you said as we're thinking forward to how we would incorporate more tree protection and promoting trees, um, I am quite sure Andrew said they had to add city positions to do that work because it adds up to a significant number of professional hours yeah yep yeah. i mean they, they did and they they went over that um, tree protection ordinance and sort of how it operates and they had to they added a full-time staff person um there's andrew who is sort of like the equivalent of what i do in northampton and then there's dave Leftcourt, who is the actual tree warden and city forester and then he 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 has an assistant forester so we don't have that kind of framework here. I'm the superintendent of the three different divisions that fall under FPC. And then I sort of just do all the tree work as well, which is part of FPC, but I, it's not separate. Um, a lot of the counterparts that I that are throughout the Commonwealth that are tree wardens are strictly tree wardens or city arborists. They don't deal with parks and playgrounds they don't deal with cemeteries um al snow and amherst is an exception alan snow and i have a mirror type job dave left court in cambridge and i do not mirror the same way um john forber who works in marblehead also just manages trees does not manage the parks doesn't manage the cemetery so um it, it's an interesting concept and i think that you know everything we're putting in the ground has to be managed by someone, whether it's myself or on the next person after me or whomever it may be. Um, but I think that's another great point, Sue, and it's a great conversation piece in the future about how we're going to, if we move forward on some of these other initiatives or start to investigate them, I think you'll see that there are a lot of different frameworks throughout the Commonwealth, um, like Cambridge's and also like ours. So. Does anybody have any questions for Kent before we move on? Yes. Is, yes, Rich. Um, you know, it, as I mentioned before, the idea of digging into the data, such as what season trees were planted, and uh, you know, it seems like you know that digging in a little bit deeper might tell us some more information uh, such as, you know, such as the, the information we saw today was excellent and it told us this is what we have, but, you know, digging in and kind of cross-referencing different criteria might tell us why things happened, you know, why certain species survived and others didn't. Was it seasonal? Was it location? Um, you know, are tree belts more dangerous than setbacks, et cetera? Um, so at the risk of you know, making additional work for Kent, that kind of uh, deeper digging and cross-referencing might tell us some interesting things that could guide us in future plantings. Yes. It's yeah, not out of the question. Um, you, know, you talked about putting together a list of follow-up questions and, and maybe some of those are things that can be answered from the data. I'm happy to look at that. And um, I think those planting dates are somewhere. But follow up on what Rich Parrish just said. Are there other questions? Might be, what do we need to collect that we haven't been? 
Like, do we need to re- actually attach the source or I don't know, or, or document like when they go in, I know we, I've taken photographs and sent them of when we've had a particularly bad root system on a tree. We'll take a photo of it and say, you know, this tree has really bad roots, but we planted it. Yeah, I mean, another another um, data set that's not on there that would be easily, Ken could easily manage, I think, is whether the tree was a bare root, B&B, or grow bag. Right, I can't. That's not. That wasn't. Uh, we didn't talk about. Is that in the data set that you put together? I don't think um, it is. It does look like it is. It um, is okay. So I wonder. I wonder if we could easily assign them. Uh, um, you know, to understand the mortality between uh, each growing medium, or each planting medium. Maybe that might be a little helpful. Um. But I, the dates, the dates are would be difficult because I'd have to go back and find all the papers unless someone has all the dates oh. for all the trees planted. The date in the very beginning, I used to keep the actual date of the tree planting and the spreadsheet, but then I just changed it to the year. Oh, okay. So it's it's, but it is possible. Um, hmm. You know, and I, and I think the other criteria, of Rich, the, Rich Parish, that you're, you're talking about is is uh, would be so like when you're doing an inventory, you know, of a of a tree that exists, you actually you make notations of the condition around the tree, um, whether there's hardscape or hardscape damage, uh, the size of the tree belt, um, the tree's location to utility wires and things of that nature. So you would create, I think, going forward, if we wanted to create a data set. For the trees that we're planting going forward and collecting that kind of data that that way there you could you know better understand where the trees are being planted um and as far as like car accidents and impacts with people that you know those are those are sort of far and few between we've had a few but not very many um but i i do think it's interesting I think it's all interesting. I think there's a lot we can learn from the data and we could probably add more to it. Um, so I, I would encourage you all to send me an email with any questions you might want to talk about at the next meeting. And I can just put them into a spreadsheet. Um, and then we can just sort of drill down them and maybe we can maybe ask Kent to draw some more data out of the information that we presently have, if possible. If that makes sense. And by the way, I forgot to mention, Rich Parrish got sworn in as a as our, our new commissioner. Sorry, Rich, I should have mentioned something. Hip, hip, hooray. Welcome. Uh, at the beginning of the meeting. My apologies. Happy to be here. Um, so, um, so, yeah. Uh, anyone else have any other questions for Kent? No. All right. Th Kent, again, thank you very much. So super informative. Great to work with you and looking forward to your next presentation at our next meeting. Um, th thank you. Uh, Arbor Earth Day event wrap up. Happened a long time ago. <laughs> I don't remember. Do we do we give trees away? No, I'm just kidding. Um, so I was um, just, again, want to say thank you to Sue, Jen, Christina, David. I mean, everybody. I just want to say thank you to everybody because you've, you've, all of you, everyone that participated in the Earth Day planting with the Rotary Club and the Arbor Day planting and the Arbor Day whip giveaway just stepped up to the plate. And it was like a well... It was a well-oiled machine where the, to the point where I could feel comfortable walking away on Arbor Day and I knew everything would be fine. So that's, that's a lot. So um, so I, I thank you. Um, Can I butt in and say public thanks to Barbara Devlin from the Rotary Club who, be, who took on the role of being the kind of funnel, school volunteers, public volunteers, Rotary volunteers, collecting all the information, communicating with them, communicating with me and Jen, 
and also Vicky Van Z, who um, recruits and recruits. They deserve credit too. <laughs> Yeah, I thank you very much. I'm sorry if I missed anyone, but um, we, you know, we were successful. Sue, we gave away all 600 whips. Yes, uh, we did. Yep. Gone. I'm kind of, I have to push the volunteers to, if someone says they'd like one, say, how about three or four? <laughs> and um, Jen, planting on Arbor Day went off like without a hitch. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, 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 um, it was it was just great. great you know, you know we, we probably, probably contacted, contacted with three three information, information you know you know 100, 100 students, students you know, you know something, something like that, like that. So, so yeah yeah maybe, maybe more, more maybe more than 100, 100 but, but yeah yeah that was, that fun. was fun it was big, and, and i appreciate uh, uh david, david for getting, for getting the ball rolling, rolling with the schools, schools again. again like that like that's, that's been, been a, a a huge, a huge goal of ours, ours and, and um, um, I don't, I don't know, know taking it on, it on and just and really, really made a huge, huge difference because, because you, know, you know, we weren't, we weren't getting, getting very far, far before, 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 you know, you know, it's great, great, it's great, great. Yeah, D David, we've been fortunate. We've been able to get into the school um, either first thing in the morning uh, or right after they go inside for the first bell or second bell. So, but I, I just on a side note, those I do have those carts. We have to assemble them, um, and I have the watering jug. So I'll reach out to you um, either later this week or beginning of next week. That'd be great. That'd be great. Okay. And, and thanks to thanks to you, Jan, for carrying it forward. Yeah, really. I mean, it's 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 impressive. You, you, and you have to remember the history that I have is, um, you know, 30 something years ago, no one talked to anyone. School department didn't want to have anything to do with trees, even the, even internally DPW, the cemetery division didn't talk to the park and rec. Nobody planted trees there. It, it's so different now. It's like a complete um, um, uh, breath of fresh air constantly. So it's very invigorating. So thank you. Um, anyone else have anything to add about Arbor Day? No. Okay. Um, any other business not anticipated by the chair? Molly. I just have an idea to throw out. Um, sure. I was, I happened to be walking through Jackson Heights the other day and noticing how there's really very few trees there and including some big stumps of trees that you know, used to be there that aren't there. Um, and I think it's owned by the Northampton Public or the Housing Authority or something. I don't know. Um, that probably doesn't qualify as a place where we can plant, does it? Because it's, is it privately owned? It's not like Northampton or would it be set back or it would be great if we could, I mean, talk about social justice area. If there would be some kind of planting we could do there maybe with the potential of organizing people, you know, maybe people there would like to help out or I don't know, but it, it's in dire need of some shade, I would say. Sorry, Molly. I'm trying to find Jackson Heights. I can't. Is, it Is that the name of it? It's up on the corner. Hampshire, Hampshire Heights? Hampshire Heights. Oh, uh, sorry. It's on Jackson Street. On the corner of Jackson Street and Bridge Road. Oh, yes. We have planted there. Hampshire Heights. Is that what it's called? Yeah, and they have had trees come down. We have definitely planted there. I know Rob worked on that. Oh. The housing Authority, I think. Yeah, I don't know what they're like to work Which, with. Do you know? We've worked um, with them a couple times. So we, we did do the Housing Authority planting um, at the um, Fruit Street Kale Apartments. So that was, we, uh, we I think, 17 or 18 trees. And then we did plant um, some trees on the tree belt on in front of the uh, McDonald House. Um, so we could do setback plantings there to a certain point, and then 
um, we would have to turn over, you know, the rest of it internally to like Tree Northampton to actually work with the housing authority to um, to get trees planted. Um, I know that um, to talk to Molly's point about the loss tree tree canopy loss that there was a very large oak tree that was down at the back entrance on Bridge Road that was removed. Yeah as part of the widening and utility infrastructure upgrades on uh, for Damon Road intersection that that um, was not a city tree. It would belong, I believe it belonged to Hampshire Heights, so the housing authority, and it was removed. And there were a lot of upset residents because it was one of the last large trees in the, at least for shade, yeah. in the, um, even though it was on the downslope side. Um, but there are three giant stumps yeah, it, there's like a big grassy area down in that, yep. that eastern section um, with three humongous stumps there. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, the thing I learned, one of the things I learned today um, at this um, presentation in Cambridge is that Cambridge has um, a group, um, uh, Cambridge Urban Forest Friends, I think they're called, and they they actually have been working um, with residents to plant trees in, in their backyards. Mm. So there is a whole push to try to get, um, obviously, increase Cambridge's canopy. But I think, again, this is where, you know, because eventually we will run out of prime places in the tree belt to plant. We probably, I don't, I don't want to say we're going to run out of setback locations, but potentially we may not have enough setback locations where we have to start thinking about maybe asking residents to consider using their backyards, you know, to foster a tree um, and grow a tree. And then, you know, there's no agreement. It's just tree Northampton works with them to, to get the appropriate tree species based on our list, helps them get them planted, shows them how to take care of it. And then we, you know, we move on to the next uh, location. So yeah, uh, it is. It is pretty sad. You you come to that traffic light, then you look to the right. If you're on Jackson Street, and the trees that are there that are like three quarters dead have signs nailed into them, and yeah, it, just, it looks it looks pretty. It looks. I pretty don't know sad. if like um just it's a future thing to talk about yeah. is how to approach that like whether it's through the housing authority and or maybe there's some kind of um residence organization. Yep, sort of like a tenants association. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. Um, I do want to quickly say that uh, we received our Tree City USA award yesterday, our recognition. Oh. Um, we have a, uh, our sixth or seventh year. I got to look in the box. I think it's our seventh growth award. I think. Box is out in my truck, so I'm, <laughs> I apologize. So Great. Um, we've been as Tree City USA for 16 years. Um, and we are, we, we continue to, um, supersede our per capita expenditures for trees every year. So we're, we're, you know, we're also, we also, I think in, a, in another meeting, we need to talk, and I know it's six o'clock, but we probably ought to have a conversation about grant funding opportunities for next year. Um, and what we would like to get assistance with accomplishing that maybe, um, would be better done by. Um, an outside consultant, um, potentially. So sort of like in maybe another tree inventory or maybe thinking about a uh, urban forestry master plan or something of that nature. So a lot of things to think about because there is there is funding available. The grant period for these federal grants, um, the uh, we've it's gone past already. So um, so we would be in line to file either a DCR challenge grant for um, next fall, or we would be in line to be able to file for the federal money next spring so again a lot of things to think about a lot of things to review so is that the federal money that you were referring to before all this yes. money that's being put into yes. trees yes so it's the way it works is you have to apply it for it through some yes, grant. but but it's it's not strictly so anyone you do not have to work with your local partnering um so for example tree northampton could apply for grant money separately right to the federal government now. You don't need to go through DCR. Hmm. DCR still has the uh, community forestry grants that we that we were awarded, but they also are um, they also have received more funding to the tune of $230 million in grant 
opportunities. DCR. DCR has, and then U.S. Forest Service. Um, Dan, her name is Danielle Grift. Get Grift or Gift? Grift, I think it is. She is our local um, U.S. Forest Service representative, and so you would apply. We as a commission could apply directly to the U.S. Forest Service for some of this grant money that's available hmm. to do different things. Um, I love the idea of an inventory and the master plan. Those are. Yeah, I mean, I think those are things that should be on some uh, a, 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 a meeting. Um, I'd actually like yeah. to try to get someone to come to a meeting that's done a uh, urban forestry master plan so we can sort of understand what um you know what how it was put together how it got started how much it cost what was the end result were they happy with the end result so i can try to find um cambridge is one group there's another springfield might have an urban forestry master plan as well and i'm sure there's probably a few other communities i can just do a little research but um I'm also going to send you all an email and talk about the schedule for the next two months. Typically, we only meet once a month, so I will send out the meeting dates. And please let me know if you can attend. If not, we can make adjustments because um, it is the summer. Uh, little people like to go on vacation, which is great. So, any anything else? Not anticipated by the chair. All right, um, Jordan, is that you on the phone there? That is Jordan. Okay. I recognize the number, but there's no name associated with it. So thank you for coming. Uh, sorry you couldn't get in um, the through the link on the um, on the public meeting link. So I will make sure that works next time before or make sure I, I tried to figure out what happened. There's a bunch of strange things going on with the website. So I'm not really sure what happened, but my apologies. Um, anyone? Someone would like to make a motion to adjourn. I'll move, I'll move to adjourn, to adjourn the, meeting. the meeting. All right, we have we have a second. I second. All right, all right. There's a motion on the floor to adjourn the meeting in a second. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor, raise their hands, please. Thank you, everyone.